What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistigov series. Let's talk about Ruby Goldstein, my Jewish boxing series. Ruby Goldstein was born October 7th, 1907. You can find Ruby Goldstein as a young man on Cherry Street, located on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Now I had a friend named Teddy, and I mentioned this several times. He lived on Cherry Street. You could find there many Jewish fighters, young men that would use fisticuffs as a way out, as, as they called it, the ghetto. Now most people knew this area as Jaime Town, just south of the Bowery. There you would find Benny Volger, Sid Terrace, Ruby Goldstein, Jaime Bernstein, many, many other young men that would eventually turn professional as a fighter. But the biggest star you had there was Benny Leonard. And during those days, you didn't need Madison Square Garden or the Polo Grounds, New York Yankee Stadium. You had a lot of small clubs. And at that time, the big events were not the big name fighters. No, they were men who should I say boys, who were fighters in their own community. And they had neighborhood rivalries. And you couldn't wait till after school to go down to the local clubs and watch the classmate that you were just doing homework with, just playing basketball with in school, put on gloves and duke it out. with his neighborhood rivalry. Perhaps the young man was above you and your apartment building, or he might've been across the street from you, but he was the neighborhood star. <laughs> and you would find his photo, the neighborhood fish market or barbershop. And one young man's name was Ruby Goldstein. Now Ruby's father had transitioned during the birth of his years, early October 1907. Ruby and his three siblings had stayed home alone, where their mother took sewing and washing as jobs to balance the providing income for the care of her child. She would teach them lessons about the street life, about society. But Ruby was one of a few men who had many schoolyard and neighborhood fights, scraps, and rumbles before dropping out of school at the age of 14, 1921. And Ruby, along with many boys, would give themselves nicknames. And Ruby's name was the Jewel of the Ghetto. He became an amateur boxer when he saw Benny Leonard in the middle of a crowd as he was being celebrated after he would become the newly world lightweight champion when he would defeat Freddie Welch, 1917, May 28th to be exact. He would stop Freddie Welch nine rounds. Oh. 
All the young boys could not wait to get a handshake from Benny Leonard. And when they got one, they didn't wash their hands for a week. And Benny knew that he inspired a lot of young men. One of them would be Ruby Goldstein. And another young man who lived across the street. And his name was Sid Terrace. Now, mind you, they both lived on Cherry Street. They went to the same high school. And this was a true neighborhood rivalry. June 25th, 1926. Ruby was knocked clean out in front of 18,000 New York, Corny Island, Brooklyn spectators. He was stopped by the Nebraskan Wildcat, Eight Huskins. Ruby KO'd Fargo Express Billy Patrol, six rounds at the Pioneer Skating Club. It was in New York. Goldstein would defeat Jimmy Goodwrench, New York's Madison Square Garden, June 15, 1927. He would defeat him May 13th, 1927. Now he would take on his rival, Sid Terrace, at the New York Polo Grounds in front of 40,000 spectators. The entire neighborhood was waiting to see this fight. The pastors, the school teachers, the corner men who would sell ices in the street. They all were there. Either at the polo grounds or listening on the radio. The teachers would have two young men in their class fighting one another at the New York polo grounds. Oh. Now, Terrace would weigh 133 pounds. Goldstein would weigh 138. It was a charity for the Catholic Boys Club. And on that undercard, he would have Billy Patrol, the Fargo Express. Billy Wallace. These two men would get it on early in that particular card. We'd also have eight Hutkins, the Nebraska Wildcat. Take on Sergeant Sammy Baker. Now, Ruby Goldstein would lose to the babyface assassin Jimmy McLaurin in two rounds, New York's Madison Square Garden, December 13, 1929, in front of 19,000 spectators. He killed Jack Zivick, September 10th, 1930. Ruby Goldstein would be a referee for 21 years. He had it hard due to the stock market crash in 1929. He would lose all his earnings, as did Benny Leonard, as did Sid Terrace, as did many young men in those communities. He had a fighter by the name of Bob Olin. He would become the light heavyweight champion of the world. Now he would lose his title to John Henry Lewis. But do you know that Bob Olin, before he became a fighter, He worked as a financial officer. And once that stock market crashed, a lot of men went to boxing. Goldstein would be a referee, June 25th, 1952. For the Sugar Ray Robinson, Joey Maxim fight, New York's Yankee Stadium. 
As I had the pleasure of meeting Ruby Goldstein. He would tell me about that fight. He would tell me about the fight with Robinson and another young man from England. There was Randy Turpin. He would explain to me about the bout with Benny Kid Perrette, 1962, and Amo Griffith, March 24th of that year. He talked about Joe Lewis and Joe Walcott, both fights, New York's Madison Square Garden. He talked about Rocky Marciano versus Joe Lewis at the Garden, eighth round knockout. He had to stop that fight. It was a tear-joking moment. And that was Joe Lewis's last fight. Ruby Goldstein was a Jew of the ghetto. He was some fighter. Ruby would retire when the fight came in 1942. He'd become a trainer and eventually a referee. April 23rd, 1984, at the age of 76, with a record of 62 total bouts, 56 wins, 40 knockouts, 7 losses, Ruby's name would be etched in the annals of pugilism. Great fighter, fantastic humanitarian, was a controversial referee, but he was something else. It was a pleasure speaking to Ruby Goldstein on Teddy's couch. I knocked on the door Teddy answered the door, said, I want you to meet someone. As I walked in the apartment, Ruby Goldstein was sitting there. Teddy said, do you know who this man is? And I couldn't quite make out who he was because obviously I've seen him in pictures as a young man, as you're looking at right here. Yes, I've seen him referee on videotapes with the fights that I had mentioned to you. But he was an older man at that time. And I, I, could, I could spot his face, but I couldn't quite make out who he was. And he told me that's Ruby Goldstein. And I was numb. He told me to sit down, I sat down. I didn't know what question to ask. I didn't know if I should ask a question. And Ruby Goldstein told me all I needed to know about the game of boxing during the 1920s. He mentioned everybody. He told me about the Harlem Thunderbolt, Harry Smith, Pride of Harlem, Jack McVeigh, the Leaperville Shadow, George Godfrey, Rocky Graziano, Harold Green, Sandy Saller and Jimmy Carter. Mentioned Joe Lewis and all of his fights. He talked about Albany Davis and Billy Arnold and Kid Chocolate. talked about Tommy Hurricane Jackson and Floyd Patterson and Rocky Marciano, Tony Zale. We talked for hours. And Ruby and Teddy laughed about old times. And I'm sitting there listening and enjoying every moment of it. And eventually, Ruby Goldstein would leave the neighborhood. Around 1977, he would move 
I would learn later on to Miami. But you would see him come back to New York because he traveled along with Joe Lewis and he refereed a lot of Joe Lewis's fights. Joe Lewis had a big impact on that. So Ruby Goldstein would be at various events It was a pleasant meeting Ruby Goldstein. But he would be stopped in one round at the New York Polo Grounds from his arch rival, Sid Terrace, 1927. He knew what it was like when he refereed the bout with Ray Robinson and Randy Turpin because he himself was the pride of his community. His pictures were in every barbershop and he was counted on by those who lived on the block. And when he was stopped in one round, he himself took it very hard. Although he got back in the ring and he would continue to box. But he understood Ray Robinson's concern after his first loss to Randy Turpin. It would be his second official boxing loss as a professional. Lost to Jake Lamada in 43, did Ray Robinson. But when Robinson lost to Randy Turpin, in 1951, he was champion in the middleweight division. And at that time, it was very difficult for the black community to deal with because they had Joe Lewis, they had Ray Robinson, and by that time, John Henry Lewis had retired Henry Armstrong had retired in 44. Basically had Ray Robinson because Lewis would retire a few months after that. And Goldstein gave Ray Robinson a second chance He was a fight doctor. Wanted Ruby Goldstein to stop the fight. And when Ruby came over to the corner, head trainer Harry Wally Sr. said, Ruby, please do it for me. Give me one more round. Soldier Jones will take care of this cut. And Ruby looked up and he had a flashback of his own career that night in the same polo grounds with Sid Terrace. It was at that moment he gave it another shot. And when Ray dropped Randy Turpin, and Ruby sent Ray over to a neutral corner. And again, the count. And Ruby would get up closer to Turpin. Turpin would get on one knee and he would stand up and he would stagger and Robinson would take him to the ropes. Ruby Goldstein would move from side to side to get a perfect angle as Robinson went to work, body and head. And Ruby Goldstein would eventually stop the fight. And he told Teddy and I he shed a tear because he felt Robinson did it for him. New York fighter. He knew what Ray Robinson was feeling and he wanted 
Ray Robinson to gain redemption for him. What a moment that was in the eyes of Ruby Goldstein. What a story that was that was told to Teddy and I on the couch. Teddy's apartment on Cherry Street. Shout out to Ruby Goldstein. Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistigov Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel.